This code sample includes two applications. The first is an application for the Android platform. It's a very simple application that includes two components a receiver, or let's say a class that extends broadcast receiver. We uh, specify as a receiver, our app includes a broadcast receiver and a simple activity. Uh, the simple activity we have is just for uh, performing the registration uh, with the Google Cloud messaging server. The other application is simple code in PHP. Simple code that uses a class, its name is GCM push message, a class that wraps simple code in PHP for interacting with the Google Cloud message server. I found this class uh, on GitHub. It was developed by Matt Grundy based on code he found on Stack Overflow. Using the Google Cloud message server for push notification, we should understand that each and every mobile telephone that our application was installed on should need to get its own specific registration ID. So let's say these uh, small rectangles represent small mobile telephones. And there are endless number of mobile telephones. Now, there is the Google Cloud Messaging Server, so let's uh, make it clear, and Google Cloud Messaging Server, and there is also our server on which we have code running code we developed. So let's specify this is our server. Now, um, if we want to use Google Cloud Messaging Server for push notification, it all starts with uh, a registration. Simple registration being performed on the mobile telephone on which our application is running. Using this registration that actually involves with some sort of networking coming out from the device to the GCM server and then in return the application running on the device receives a registration ID. This registration is necessary because once the registration ID is received, then the application should update our server with that uh, specific registration ID. We should write code on our server that manage all users and the registration IDs each one of them has. Now, whenever we want to send a message to a specific application running on a specific device, we shall use the registration ID for that specific device. And we shall simply initiate either an HTTP request or we can also use the uh, XMPP protocol but in this code sample I will use the HTTP simplest uh, protocol we just need to initiate a request coming out from our server to Google Cloud messaging server the GCM server and that HTTP request should include the registration ID for which we want to send a message uh, the GCM server will take care uh, of our after our request and send a push notification to the specific mobile telephone that uh, it has just received its uh, registration ID. S 
so if you want to summarize the steps it goes like that first we have the need to register register the mobile telephone on GCM server so through this phase um, there is a request coming out from the mobile telephone to the GCM server and the reply this is the second step so I write to the replies actually includes the registration ID now the next step would be updating the code we have on our server with that registration ID so so that our server will be able to um, send push notification whenever we want to specific uh, uh, device to specific mobile telephone using its uh, registration ID just imagine that each one of the devices has a registration ID and here we manage all users and the registration ID each one of them has so whenever we want to make a push notification we just need to issue initiate a request coming out from our server and the GCM server will just initiate a push notification to the mobile telephone that its registration ID was used by our server when it sent the request to the GCM server to create that push notification browsing at console.developer.google.com we can create a new project so let's name it GCM server example let's press create let's wait a moment or two till the project is uh, created so we try to create a new project its name is GCM server example and yes we have it ready for use now here selecting APIs we can enable the Google Cloud messaging for Android service we just need to press enable API now that we have that API enabled we can press credentials and select create new key and here let's select the server key because we are about to use the key uh, in our code that is that will be run on our server so that key will be used when initiating the request from our server to the Google Cloud messaging server asking it to initiate a push notification to specific mobile telephone so let's select server key and here we should specify the IP number the IP number of our server from which the request will be sent to the GCM server for asking it to initiate a push notification uh, for the purpose of testing you can also select 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 slash 0 let's press create and here we have the API key let's copy it okay now let's get back to the code itself so we have a uh, code in PHP this is the code that will be running on our server and will initiate a request to GCM server to initiate a push notification to specific device so here we are going to use the API key so let's update this key with the new one okay yeah it worked now 
let's go to the code in Java, the application we wrote for the Android platform, the application that includes a simple activity and a broadcast receiver. Now, if we take a look at the uh, activity itself, then you can see that it is a very simple activity. It's just for the sake of um, showing how the GCM server works. So I try to, to develop the simplest uh, application you can think of. And as you can see, the first se step is checking whether the, the Google Play services is enabled on our device. So I have a separated function that simply uh, calls the function, the static function is Google Play services available and it calls it using the class Google Play Services Util, a class that uh, this method was defined in as a static method. Now, before we can even write this code and execute it, we first need to go to the SDK manager and verify that under the extras section we have the Google Play services installed. It must be installed otherwise we won't be able to write the application. In addition we also must update the build.gradle file. Now pay attention, you can see two files, two build.gradle files. This one is for the entire project. This is for uh, the module itself. Um, a, a project uh, you develop in Android Studio can include uh, one module or more. Um, the idea is allowing you to develop one project that includes several modules. One module is a, an application for Android, another module is a web application, another module is a standalone application, and so on. So the build.gradle you should update is this one. You just need to add this line to the dependencies, that's all, and it will do the work, and that way, this way, the Google Play services will be available for us when we write the code itself. Now let's get back to the activity. So here I just check whether Google Play services is enabled or not and if it is enabled and everything is okay the function returns true so we can uh, display a message saying Google Play services is fine. Uh, if we find that it's not available then we can uh, write some code that will uh, instruct the user to install the Google Play Services uh, APK or enable the push notification in case if uh, in case it was uh, disabled for some reason. Before I move forward, I want to explain a bit more what happens on every mobile telephone. Every mobile telephone uh, now has the application we developed. So let's uh, draw a simple rectangle representing that uh, application we develop. In addition, there is the Google Play application. The Google Play application is the one that um, uh, communicate with the GCM server. This is the, 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 the Google Play um, application that we already have installed on our device is the one that maintain um, continuous TCP IP connection with the GCM server so that whenever a push notification message arrives it is actually um, a simple um, request coming from the GCM serv server to the uh, Google application a simple re request over TCP IP a request to uh, perform a push notification and the code inside the Google uh, Play application just uh, uh, broadcast an intent 
an intent that arrives a broadcast receiver in our application that simply takes out from the intent the message that was uh, uh, sent from our server. This way the battery life improves because if that service, the Google Cloud messaging service, which is uh, by the way free without any limit, if it wasn't uh, offered by Google then I believe the battery life was shorter because every application would have implement some sort of uh, continuous TCP IP connection with a server just for uh, allowing uh, push notification so we actually need should thank uh, Google, Apple, Microsoft for providing us the platform for push notification uh, saving time on our end we don't need to develop it and the bottom line users enjoy uh, longer battery life once we know the Google Play services is available uh, we need to check maybe we already have a registration ID we can use uh, stored in a shared preference I chose to avoid writing code for doing it but if you plan to implement a push notification in your application then you should write some code that will check maybe the sh maybe a registration ID already exists from uh, previous registration from the last time the user uh, was using the application and if this is the case then we can um, skip the registration with the GCM server also another issue you should verify is that we are not dealing with uh, upgrading of our application because if the user upgrades uh, installs a new version of the application then the registration process must be performed a new registration ID must be uh, retrieved from the GCM server we cannot use the registration ID that was uh, used with the previous uh, version so this is also something you need to check the registration itself should be performed on another thread it cannot be performed on the main thread so I'm using an uh, async task and here in order to register all I need to do is calling the static function get instance defined in Google Cloud messaging passing over the context and get a reference for a Google Cloud messaging object on which I should invoke the register method. Now the number you pass over should be the ID of the project. So over here I can see the project number, not the ID, the project number uh, of our GCM server example project. This is the project ID. We need to take the project number so I copy paste the project number and the register function should return the registration ID this is the registration ID we should send to our server in order to allow it uh, to keep it for the very specific user uh, in a database or something like that so that the our server will be able to send a push notification to this specific uh, application on that specific device from uh, which this registration was performed so if we get back to the diagram um, step 3 in which uh, the registration ID is sent from our application to our server this is the step we should implement code for uh, completing it. Anyway, I chose to keep things simple, si simple just uh, in, in order to focus on the more important part of using the GCM service. So, in this case, I can expect having on screen a message including the registration ID. I can also expect in logcat having the that message so I could just copy let's execute the application
let's pick a device to run the application on and as you can see we get the message saying that Google Play services is enabled and the registration ID is the one you can see over here so we can just go and copy this uh, registration ID And this is the registration ID our application should send to our server uh, but we skip this part in order to make the code sample simple as possible so I copy this registration ID and now I go to the code running on the server here we already specified the API key we received from Google Console and here we should specify the registration IDs of those uh, devices to which we want to send the push notification so I just place this new registration ID if you want more than one device then you can just specify the other registration IDs as uh, additional values for this array and the message itself would be um, we love PHP or maybe something else um, PHP course and The title we want for that message would be PHP. Now, in order to cause this code to execute and indirectly actually send a request to GCM server, a request to send a push notification to the Android device, this is the registration ID it receives we just need to have um, in this case the HTTP server together with the PHP execution environment up and running and since I have this code on my computer I will just start the HTTP server together with the PHP engine and in order to execute the code um, just need to specify this name of the folder in which we have the server demo.php file so we just need to specify, specify push notification demo slash server demo.php enter and as you can see the output we get on screen includes the response we get from the GCM server so we can actually learn from that response that the push notification was sent this is the response we get um, this message is just uh, plain text printed over here so if we want we can take the string returned from GCM server and since it is simple JSON we can fetch out those values we are interested at and do something with them now if we go back to the device itself over here we should expect get in our log messages the PHP course and PHP if you check the application itself it also includes a receiver now this receiver inside the on receive method this is the method that receives the intent the intent fired from the Google Play application when a push notification message arrives here 
we just print out the message and then the title so that's why we got PHP course and then after that the PHP because this is the title now if you take a look at the manifest file then you can see that the broadcast receiver was configured um, in a way that it has an intent filter matching the the intent coming from the Google Play application. Now pay attention that here the category should include over here the package name associated for with uh, your application and the package name associated with uh, this application you can find it over here com life michael gcm client so here i specify com life michael GC gcm client this is one thing to pay attention to uh, in addition over here we have a use permission with, uh, starting with a com life michael gcm client which is the package name associated with the application you also need to make sure you don't have any mistakes spelling mistakes over here and the same over here you should specify com life michael gcm client and then the rest when specifying this uh, specific permission you can find the code sample I've just overviewed as well as uh, detailed presentation that explains everything together with many other courses in my website um, just browse abelski.lifemichael.com you will arrive at this website here you just need to create an account if you uh, um, fail to receive the approval email check the spam folder maybe it arrive this spam folder approve the registration and then you can enjoy free free for personal use as well as for academic purposes all my courses you have lots of courses uh, in different categories and here in the Android platform category you have the um, Google Cloud messaging uh, course and here you can find inside the jumpstart samples the code sample I've just overviewed in this video clip